Now, this isn't the first time that I've talked about Docker, but this is probably the first time where I've talked about using Docker swarms with uh, stack deploy. So, in this case, let's take a perfectly good example. Here I've gone and installed uh, curl and uh, git because I'm going to use them later in the demonstration. So, these are not always a requirement, but they're good to have. Uh, I'm also going to confirm to you because I, I did get asked in previous videos which version I'm using and in this case it's the 18.4 long term release 2. So keep in mind with those that this is currently the release. Um, obviously that might change at later point but just for the moment this is the current release of Ubuntu for the long term release. Now I'm going to use the curl command to get the latest version of Docker. So this is actually going to run a shell script and for those of you who've watched some of my other videos we talked about how we can embed shell scripts or PowerShell scripts also into the build process in order to have a machine that already has things installed on it. So you could as an example uh, do this by uh, baking into the uh, build of your Linux machine all the necessary steps including as an example this curl command to go off and get the installation uh, it, that would then effectively build your machine fully automated every time but for the moment we'll just let this one finish what it's doing and go ahead and start making the regular modifications which I would expect most people to do so the very first thing I expect anyone to do is once you've done the installation, confirm what version you've actually got installed. So in this case, we're going to quickly confirm that again, I'm not cheating. This is the same Linux host. That's my version of Linux. Um, and also that's the version of Docker that's installed. So we can see we've also got the server version here as well. Um, and, and we can also see the more important part, which is the thing I always change, which is the uh, file location so as an example in my case I want to have multiple disks so I don't want to have docker store all of its files on the same file system as my OS disk so I'm gonna basically tell it to go to a different mount point now in my case um, this means stopping docker immediately it means going in and creating a JSON file which will then allow me to uh, modify uh, the various um, locations of the config files. Now to do that um, I don't need to create a folder but I'm going to create a folder anyway so in this case the storage pool that I'm referencing here is actually on a network drive and therefore is somewhere else. So in, I'm just creating a folder structure so that my servers go to an appropriate folder rather than dumping everything into one location and having them potentially overwrite one another. So now that that folder structure is created, um, I'm going to go ahead and now point to it using the JSON file. Now you can do this by manually creating the file and I've done that I think at least once before in another video. But for now I'm just going to uh, happily use the cat argument to create the file um, fully configured as I would expect it to be. So here we see our docker root uh, references my previous location and we're using the storage driver the overlay 2. Um, you can just use overlay but the current version is overlay 2. I'd recommend that you do that otherwise you will get a warning message telling you that the overlay is being deprecated. Um, so it doesn't prevent you from using it obviously but it's something to keep in mind. So next up we go and start docker again which is a straightforward process and what we're going to do is very quickly uh, confirm the docker um, location. So if we do the docker info command again and um, we just look to see where our root location is we see it's now that mapped network drive that I have. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just simply use that. So we can do a quick uh, look into the directory and if we look for our host here uh, we can see that we've got two folders. Uh, this particular server is called server1. Not terribly great, I know, for imagination, but still you get the point. And here we have some files. So uh, from this point on, we can now go ahead and start building our applications. So we're going to 
immediately now start up with creating the docker swarm because that's the first thing that we're going to need to do uh, we can't use any of the service functionalities the secrets or other deployment things until the swarm is actually running which is one of the differences between having a standalone instance and having multiple ones so I've created my uh, docker swarm here I'm just going to take the key from this and paste it into my secondary node which is off screen uh, which basically is following along with roughly the same point as my primary one here so uh, docker is already installed we're up to this point and instead of doing the docker swarm initiate I'm just gonna go paste the docker swarm join into the other one so if I just show you that we have the docker nodes LS and at the moment you'll see that we just have the one and if I paste that join command along with the token key that goes with it off screen I should then be able to go back to here and list the hosts once more and you'll see that the other server has joined and uh, now you can see we have a worker node now it's not always a good idea to have such a small number and usually I would recommend that you have a minimum of at least two managers to three plus workers but in this case we are working with a small lab so we're just going to go with what we have now next stage we obviously need to test um, some applications here to kind of get the functionality going so in this case I'm going to use the uh, git clone functionality and clone an existing deployment from the docker examples list so you can go to github and download the docker samples in this case it's a voting app so it has a postgres db a couple of web front ends so you can kind of have that experience of playing around with the application rather than needing to write your own just for learning purposes so if we use the docker uh, stack deploy and then we're going to use the uh, compose file so we're actually going to use the file from the download here um, as you can see there's lots of different examples depending on whether you're doing a Kubernetes deployment if you're just doing a standalone compose if it's a Windows or a Linux one in this case I know it's Linux and I know that I'm going to be using the compose file and there's no other crazy functionality and as you can see once you run that um, first of all the service in this case is called vote which is the last part at the end of that command and secondly you can see all the things that don't exist like the network layer the storage and everything else that is specified within that file it goes off and starts to create so if I now look at what state we're at and just do a service list you'll see that it's effectively none of the services are started as yet and I know that the reason for that is that in the background they're downloading the necessary images to get started so at this point I'm gonna leave that to run and I'm not gonna focus at all on it starting up because I know that it's a perfectly good example and you can play around with it for yourself what I'd rather show you is let's look at the compose file itself so there are a couple of differences with compose files that you'll see in this kind of example from uh, ones that we've done in previous videos as an example in previous videos we didn't cover things like deployment uh, constraints although we did briefly touch on them but not in any detail uh, so as an example here we have uh, restart delays uh, restart functionality so on failure conditions these don't exist in regular standalone because you don't have that manager functionality we also have a constraint here telling us that the role or node that it should be going to is to the manager node um, so that basically dictates where that um, container will be loaded you could say worker or in this case manager uh, if you had a mixed environment you can say Linux or Windows so it doesn't just have to be node you can also specify by OS and we can also see that we have a data volume so we know that we have persistent data storage on the manager node which will be located and now that sums it up for this video if you liked it give us a thumbs up if you didn't you know what to do and as always subscribe for more content